What's up guys, Van Zeeben here from Designs by Sphere. Today what we're going to be doing on uh, this episode of Java 2D Game Dev is we're going to be doing some extra tiles. And I know I'm releasing this episode a little earlier than usual, but I don't know, I just feel like feel like getting one out. So uh, let's do some animated tiles. Last episode what we did was we loaded in our first level here. So if we open up our game, you'll see that we have a little guy here. Uh, we, do, we do have Void here, which is rendering a little strange. Uh, that's okay, we don't really care about that for now. But we do have our guy, and he walks around, and he does get stuck. Collision works. So that's all great. What we're going to be doing today is animated tiles. So we're going to build specifically a water tile. We want to have some sort of animated water motion. So first things first, we need a level for that. So this was our last level that we had. It was just kind of a tiny little level. So let's just create a new, and let's make it 64 by 64. So that's all good. Let's zoom in a little bit. Unlock this layer here. Uh, sure. And delete everything. And what we're going to do here is we are going to set the color. So this is full green. So we're just going to make it completely grass. And we're going to use a nice blue for the thing. We're going to use a full blue. So we're going to say 0 and 255 for that. And so this is going to be the, the water color. I'm just going to increase this here. Um, I just want to kind of draw a little random, random ocean here. This is going to be our water here. So let's just say like that. That works. So we'll have just a little ocean like this, and let's get li let's get a little river down too. Eww. Just going off the screen. There. So there's there's our uh, kind of looks like a brain actually. There's gonna that's gonna be our level. So I'm just gonna save this in levels here, and I'm gonna name it uh, uh, water test level. Okay. And we're gonna change the format to PNG and save it. Now what we're going to need is we're going to need some actual water tiles. So I'm going to put the animated tiles along the third row here, let's say. Yeah, third row. Um, just because, just because, really. Uh, I just want to leave some room for some for two rows of actual tiles, then we'll have some animated tiles. Maybe the fifth row will go down a little bit. Because um, we got tons of room here. Uh, we can always rearrange these things later as well. So we're just going to set our size back down to one. And we're going to check our colors off here. So we're going to have the basic one be this dark color. And we're going to need three different tiles. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go here. Um, this is five, zero, one, two, three, four. No, let's go down. Five. So we're just going to have three different tiles. I don't need all this. Uh, let's just get rid of you. There. And we're just going to set that into that gray color there. Let's zoom in a little bit more just so we can get it. So the first one is just going to kind of be a blank canvas. Uh, it's just going to be kind of like blank water. Nothing's happening. It's kind of still. Next, what we're going to need is we actually need a new color here. So we're going to go up and we're going to take this color. I get it? Yeah. And where do we go? There it is. And this this is going to be this one. This one's just going to be kind of like a little, like we're, we're starting to build up a wave. So I don't know. Let's put a dot there, some there, and there. I don't know. That's good enough for now. Uh, we can always change these later on. We just want to make sure that it works. Uh, next, we're going to actually have to build up a full wave, so let's just kind of build this wave up like this, and then maybe like one right, I don't know, here, oops, here, and then here, over and down, that works, I don't know, it's just kind of like a basic water wave, and let's just save this, so what's, what's essentially we're going to do is we're going to use this tile first, then we're going to jump to the second tile here, then the third, and back to the second, and back to the first, and it's just going to kind of bounce back and forth between them. So it kind of looks like the waves going up and then coming down, going up, coming down. Now that we have it saved and we're in our workspace, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start on this animated tile. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to create a new class in the level or in the tiles package, and we're going to call it animated uh, tile. Okay. Now this animated tile is going to extend uh, basic tile, just because we we want to keep extending it and we're going to import the constructor there let's just import that now what see right now we have an X and a Y coordinate and these actually I think I did this wrong yeah right here this should not be X plus Y it should be X plus Y times 32 because there are 32 going width wise 32 different squares so this Y times 32 will go first so as we've done before that's that was incorrect last time and I noticed that in the video but that is that is right now um, Anyways, back to the animated tile. Uh, so what we have here is we have an X and a Y coordinate for where the actual tile is stored. But we have a few of them. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a 2D array for this. Uh, there are other ways you could have done this. This is just my way of doing it. Um, I prefer doing it like this. So that's just how we're going to do it. Um, so we're going to call it animation chords. Oops. Animation chords. Okay. 
and tile color, level color, and we'll also need a delay. So we'll say int uh, animation switch delay. Okay, there's that. So super here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go animation chords at 0, 0 here. Because it's a 2D array. Um, and for the Y, it's the same thing, but it's going to be 0, 1. Okay, so essentially how this array is going to work... Actually, let me draw a picture. I'll, I'm going to draw a picture and I'll be back in a second. Hello there. Now, this is why we are using a 2D array for this. This is essentially what our array is going to look like. So right here, we'll have an X coordinate. And right here, we'll have a Y coordinate. Okay, and this is going to be the first animation sequence. So we'll just put this as a 1 here. Next, what we're going to go is we're going to jump down to this second one here. Oh, it's, it's so bad drawing with pixels. Uh, and this is going to be the X coordinate for that. And this is going to be the Y coordinate for that. Then down to the third, and the X, and the Y, etc, etc, etc. So that is why we're using a 2D array for this. Um, it's, it's a pretty basic design to do, and it's pretty simple to do. But, uh, yeah, hope you understood that. If you need more clarification on why we're using 2D arrays for this, just uh, post a comment and we can get into that. Uh, next, what we're going to need is we're going to need some, some variables in here. So we'll say private int, uh, and this is going to be the 2D array. We're going to say animation tile chords, again. Um, that T should actually be capital. Uh, next, we're going to need the actual current animation index. So which number here the fir of the first um, array we're in. So that again, if we go back to our thing which I removed, it would be which kind of tier we're on, if I use that word. Um, so we're going to say private int current animation, uh, animation index. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to need a, a time for the last iteration, so the last time, and this is where the, the animation switch delay will come into effect, because we only want to be updating this I either every second, every half a second, stuff like that, but we're going to keep it in seconds for now. Um, so, actually, no, let's do it in, in uh, milliseconds. But anyways, uh, so this is going to be a long here, so last iteration time. Uh, this is going to be the milliseconds that we last uh, did the update, okay? And now we're going to have private int animation switch delay. Just so we can store this variable. Uh, now let's populate all those. So this dot animation core tile chords was animation chords. This dot current animation index is going to be zero because again, we're on this, this one for both of them. We're both on zero. Uh, next we're going to say this dot last iteration time is equal to system dot current time millis. Okay, so this th we we just updated, and this dot animation switch delay is equal to animation switch delay. Okay, so there's that. Uh, next, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a tick function. Now we didn't include this in the actual tile, and I don't know why I didn't. I kind of just left it out. Um, so we're gonna go back into the tile class, and we're gonna add a new private abstract void tick, and we're just gonna put this above render here. Uh, now this will break things in the basic tile. So we're going to say public void tick, and just open close that, and I think that's all we need, yep. So now everything we have ticks, now here we're going to say public void tick, and public void render, uh, screen, screen, int x, int y. I think that was the actual things that we needed. Oh, we missed the level. Let's just copy the level in. Actually, let's just copy this in. Copy over that, that render function. There. So there's everything that we need. Uh, now the tick function, let's get, let's get into the tick function. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to check the time first. We need to verify that we should be updating. So we're going to say if, uh, let's do double brackets, system.currenttime milliseconds. Now this is the current time that we're currently at, minus the last iteration time. Last iteration time uh, is less than, or, e or sorry, is greater than or equal to and then we're going to say animation switch delay. And then we're going to say last iteration. Then we're going to update everything because now what we're saying is that we're over this time now. We're either over a second or over two seconds or over half a second. Whatever this animation switch delay, we are over that time. So we need to start updating things. So we're going to say last iteration time. So we're going to update that to now. So there. And now we're going to move the current animation index. Uh, and... Uh, Animation index up one and now this is where it's gonna get a little complicated not really but it's kind of still simple 
But what, we're, what we need to do for this animation index is we need to verify that we don't go out of the bounds. We could just plus plus. And so we start at zero, plus plus, go to one, plus plus, go to two. But now this is where the issue comes in because if we plus plus from two, we go to three. But there's nothing here. We can't use this, this animation. And so what we need to do is we need to loop it back to zero. So we are going to use the percent feature for that, or the percent function. It's called a modulo. Uh, we're going to use current animation index, uh, animation index plus one because that's that's the plus plus and now we're gonna percent so this is the modulo and we're gonna percent the animation uh, tile chords so this is that that variable up here so it's however many we have because it will use uh, sorry we put a dot length probably should say that before I start explaining it um, so when you use a dot length on a 2d array it will actually take how many elements uh, there are total not how many elements there are like here's a zero, here's a one, and here's a zero, here's a one, etc., etc. It'll actually take the first one and how many are in that. So that's what we're doing here. So we're just, it's going to keep it within the bounds. It's it's a very very easy way to do it. Um, next, what we need is our render function because our render function we don't just want to render the tile tile ID because tile ID is only going to be this zero zero once. So what we're going to do here we could leave it at tile ID, but we'd have to update it here. Okay, so I've actually made up my mind about something. Let's remove this render function here. Um, we're just going to update the tile ID. So we are going to say um, tile ID is equal to, and then we are going to say animation tile chords. Oops, chords. Just put it this dot tile ID. Um, animation tile chords at current animation animation index. Uh, zero because zero is the x value plus and then this is we need to bracket here and animation tile chords at current oops current animation index at one times 32 and what that is going to do in bracket there what this is going to do is it's going to update the tile ID with whatever the tile ID should be because this is the the actual the current ID in this animation um, tile chords. So it's going to update that on the fly, and we don't need to do the render function. I was originally just going to do it in the render function, but we might as well leave everything as, uh, as, as, as default as we can, so to speak. So now we need to actually add our tile into our, um, our class here. So let's get our water up here, and we're going to say public static final tile water equals new animated animated tile uh, now this is has an ID of 3 the coordinates here as we had we had a 2d array so we're gonna say new int we're gonna build this on the fly and this is how you build 2d arrays on the fly so you say new int and then you're like your 2d array and then you put these um, brace brackets and then in the brace brackets we define our elements so we're gonna say um, let's just say 0 and was it 5 and then so there's one element now we go out of those brace brackets, make a new set of brace brackets there, and we're going to say 1, 5, and then the third one is going to be the third one here again. So 0, 5, 1, 5, now 2, 5. So let's get back in there and do that. So we're going to say 2, 5. Now I need to go back to 1, 5. So we're going to say 1, 5. And that's all we'll need for that. So this is this is our loop. We're gonna go 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 1, 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 1, 5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just gonna go back here and then back. And that's all that's gonna do. Now, what we need is we need the rest of the elements. So we need our colors. So colors.get uh, negative one, oops, negative one, color two. Now we only use two colors there. We use the dark and not the white. So we're gonna say 0, 0, 4, uh, 1, 1, 5 and negative one just to give us some color in it um, the color now that we're defining it is 0 X FF because we need the alpha channel uh, one two three four zeros and then an FF just so it's a pure blue and just a one at the end because that one is we, we just want to do actually no we need a thousand here sorry not one one not 100 1000 so it's gonna update once a second so now what we need to do is load our level. So let's look in the levels package and let's just refresh this workspace just so we can get it updated so we can see it. And there it is, water underscore test underscore level. So let's go down here, let's say water underscore test underscore level. 
So now that we've uh, set the level, all the thing, all we have left to do is to update the uh, the ticks because we still haven't done that. So we're gonna do this kind of hacky. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can do this, but right now every tile is not individual to its location. Uh, we have each tile, even though we have all these tiles here, each tile is an independent. So what we're gonna do here is wherever this tick function is, there it is. Uh, we're just gonna loop through all the tiles that we currently have and tick them once. We may change this later on if we do wish the tiles to be independent, but we don't at the moment. We don't want everything. To, we want everything to update at the same time. So we're gonna say for tile t uh, in tile dot tiles, and if tile is equal to null, then then break. Just to get out of this, if t is equal to null, break. Uh, else t dot tick. Okay, that's gonna tick all the tiles that are actually valid. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our game and we're gonna see if this is actually working. So we see we got our, our oh there we go, and there's the animation. So we do have our water here. We can walk on it, and this is an issue we're gonna address right now as well actually, um, because I I'd want to get the full water up and running today, and this is gonna be a very long episode. So. You will see that it is it, our animation is going perfectly fine. Uh, we are running at 144 FPS when we're recording as well, so that's really good. Um, I'm quite happy about that. And this animation is is going pretty smoothly. Uh, we can increase that time if we feel like it, if we go down into the tile, because it is updating kind of slow, and maybe we want to have a faster water today. So we're going to change this down to maybe 500 and run it. And this should update half a second now, so it should be a lot faster. So there you go, you'll see that it is a lot faster, and the frames did uh, kind of drop a little bit, not too much. But uh, So there's the water, even if we have our screen full of it, it's still running at a decent FPS for, for recording as well. So there's that. Uh, now, let's get into the actual, let's change this back up to a thousand, just because. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do the player stuff, because when our player walks on water, he's not Jesus. We do not want Jesus to be walking on water here, but that's not the point of this game. So we're actually going to change that and make him kind of swim. So, let's go into the player here, and let's make him swimming. So we're going to say, protected, uh, boolean is swimming, and set it equal to false by default. Um, we may want to change some of this later on and make it apply for different mobs as well, but for now we're just going to keep it in the player, just so we can get it done. Now we go into the tick function, and we actually need to check the tile and update that swimming based on if we're actually swimming or not. So just below all everything, we're gonna say if level dot get tile, uh, this dot x shifted three, and then instead of y, this dot y shifted three, and put that in brackets actually, and then do dot get get id, and if the id is equal to three, because again in the tiles, in here we set the id of water to be three specifically. We're gonna say if that's three, um, then we're gonna say is is swimming is equal to true. Oops, true. Oh my gosh, can't spell. Uh, now we need to say that you're out of water. So we're gonna say if is swimming because we're swimming right now. And level dot get tile uh, this dot x right shifted three comma this dot y right shifted three dot get id is not equal to three so this time if we're out of water is swimming is equal to false okay so there's that so now we have uh, whether or not we're swimming or not now we need to do a bunch of different calculations in the render function just to just to base our stuff off of that so we're gonna go down here below we're actually rendered and for now we're just gonna stop rendering your body so we're gonna say this dot um, or if you're not swimming then render your body. So what this is going to do right now, we'll run it, and whenever we go in water, we should see our body disappear. So let's test that out. So we're going to go down, and our body dis did disappear. So now it kind of looks like we're swimming here. Uh, you can kind of see you moving left and right, and the left and right animations are a little smooth just because uh, we don't have any sort of arms moving around, so I might fix that up later. But uh, So there's that, and we get out of water, and we're good. Now what we need to do is uh, actually make him look like he's getting in water and he's actually bobbing around kind of because this is too too like look at that that is way too smooth and frequent so we need to make him kind of move down a little bit down to like there first things first though I kind of want to have some little uh, splashy stuff around the player so we're gonna put that down here uh, in this tile here I think we'll do it so we're gonna set this tile to black first off 
and because black is kind of like the the default and let's just fill this in okay now we're gonna have some let's say white let's just get into this uh, we're gonna have white for the outside we're just gonna say I don't know four two uh, one maybe that's a bit too far over like that that there yeah that's good so there's that uh, next we're gonna have that dark color here we're gonna put him inside like that next we're going to actually we're gonna put it in the middle as well here and then we're gonna have the light color here this is just so we can get some variance in our uh, in our water the black is obviously going to be see-through, but we're going to change these based on, on where he is, because the player is going to be right here is where his head's going to be rendered. So we're going to change this stuff. Um, so let's just save this, save that sprite sheet, and go back into Eclipse. So, here we're going to say if is swimming, because we need to render that in now. And we're going to say uh, int watercolor equals zero. Now this is going to change depending on uh, like how far into this we actually are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to say y offset uh, plus equals 4, let's say. Just half the size, so that's all we're going to do. Um, now we need some sort of uh, variable. I forgot about this earlier as well, but we need some sort of tick count, okay? So this tick count is going to go in the... Yeah, we'll keep it in here, I think. Yeah. So we're going to say private int tick count. Uh, this is just how many ticks have gone by since you've actually updated here. So we're going to say tick count plus plus right there. Yes. Now we go back down into the render function. Now that we have the tick count, we can actually um, move around based on how many ticks have gone by. So we're going to say if tick count uh, percent 60. I'm just going to use 60 here because we're going to have five of these, four of these. We're going to have four of these. And 60 is just a nice large number. We could do four, but four would move very, very fast. So 60 is just a large number that'll make that'll make um, this thing move around slower, and it'll also change it a little bit. And we're going to say if it's less than 15, because 15 is one quarter of it, we're going to say watercolor is equal to colors dot get uh, negative one, negative one, 225 negative 1 just so the only color that is rendered is this one here okay so it's just gonna be that inner color and it's gonna be rendered close to the actual color of the water um, then we're gonna say else if 15 is less than or equal to tick count percent 60 uh, and tick count oops tick count percent 60 is less than 30 so now if we're in the second bounds of it uh, we're going to change the watercolor. Oops, not ticket count, tick count. Uh, watercolor here is going to be equal to colors.get, uh, negative 1, 225, 115, oops, 5, negative 1. Just so it's kind of like a lighter thing. So this one, uh, the darker color, and the this darker color is now going to be the lighter one. So this one's going to move out one, and same with there, and this one's going to become a bit darker. So that's all we're doing, and we're just going to keep going like this. We're going to say else if. Uh, 30 is less than or equal to tick count percent 60 and tick count percent 60 is less than 45 because now we're on the next stage of it next tier uh, tick count now we're going to move the watercolor again is equal to colors dot get oops dot get uh, negative one uh, one one five negative one two two five okay so that's just going to move it out a little bit more now, and we're going to keep that that dark watercolor in here now. Uh, and else, because we're now we're at the final stage of the loop, and we're going to say watercolor is equal to colors dot get negative one two two five one one five negative one. So now we're just moving back up to here. So it'll go through this, and then it'll go back to here. So it's kind of like it's it's moving in and out again. Uh, now we actually need to render that that little that little blip here and we need to mirror it on two sides so let's do that we're gonna say screen dot render uh, x offset plus zero actually won't plus anything just x offset and then y offset plus three just because we want it down a little bit 
and the, the actual tile is going to be uh, 0 plus 27 times 32. Oops, I missed the plus there. There. The watercolor is watercolor. Uh, we're not going to mirror this one, and that's just going to be 1. Now we're going to copy this down, and instead of a 0, 0, we're going to say 0, 1. There's that. And the X offset now, we need to move it over 8, and that should be everything. So let's run it here, and let's actually see what happens. So we see our guy moving around, and he gets in the water, and you'll see this little water thing here. It's moving in and out exactly how we wanted it to. So there's a few little animations that we did today. Uh, you'll see that when he gets out of the water too, it's kind of like he's, he's bouncing in and out, so you don't get that kind of like floating head syndrome anymore, uh, which is very, very nice. And actually one thing I kind of want to do is I kind of want to make him kind of bob in the water. So let's actually do that here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say here, uh, y off offset uh, negative e equal to 1, and we'll add that for, let's say, actually let's move this down to this one, let's put it there as well. So now if we check back, uh, you'll see that our guy's little bob in here like this, I kind of like this, this is really cute. So you'll see he's swimming as well, if I go down you'll see his arms pop up and down, and it looks like he's swimming and he gets out of the water. Uh, this is a little bad right here, where he's kind of on the grass like this. I kind of don't like that, but he's, he is still in the water, so... We, we might do a little bit more optimization, like stuff like this. But for the most part, it is pretty pretty good. You'll see that he gets in, and it looks like he's actually in, and our center has been moved. Um, and I don't know, it's great. Next episode, what we're going to be getting into is we're going to do some more animation stuff, because this was really fun today, and we're probably going to do some lighting. Uh, we'll get some a day-night cycle implemented. Um, maybe torches the next episode after that as well because those are something that I do want to have um, but yeah that's been this episode of 2D Java game development hope you guys enjoyed it uh, feel free to like this video and comment on it if you have any uh, questions or anything like that I know it was a long episode and I know that we covered a lot of stuff but I just wanted to really get this water animation and uh, do some basic animations in place because it's really fun stuff so comment if you have any questions or anything like that I'll, I'm free to help I help as many people as I can uh, but yeah, take care. This has been Van Zeeben, and I'll see you guys later.